Welcome, if you are new, we are back with the next chapter, The Dryad of the Woods, Chapter 2, Thunder. Well, I'll be a wet match on a cold night, fell, and is that you? How you doing, Sam? The old man set aside his broom and hobbled over to Felton into a heartfelt hug. It must have been concerning for those observing to see that bear of a man hug the scrawny old man seemingly on the verge of a breaking ladder. I was wondering when Felton Banks was going to swing by this old lodge and give an old friend some company. Can't even recall the last time you blessed these parts. The lobby of the lodge was big, well lit by its many windows. It was cramped wall to wall with dated furniture, mainly comprised of leather comforters embroidered with creases that revealed that rivaled Sam. They are huddled in groups around chipped coffee tables like a campfire site. Every inch of the walls was heavily ornamented with old knickknacks and taxied animals that heads that filled the air with a musty scent of pine. Well, I'll be. Look at you all grown up, Sam said. I am Ruth. You're almost as tall as your pa. She grinned sheepishly at the compliment. She knew her height was nowhere near her father's towering one, yet she still rendered a hug to the old man. Hey, Sammy. You look like a stunning reflection of your mother, too. Sam went on, looking her up and down. Fell in. What you been feeding her? I swear, children been growing too doggone fast these days. Only the good stuff, but she's been dying to eat your grilled cheddars again. Sam scoffed. I done told you the recipe how many times now? You still ain't got it yet? It ain't the same, Sam. Nothing beats... Excuse me, Alex interrupted. I hate to jump between this little reunion, but I need a phone so I can call the sheriff. I got places I need to be. Now, do you have one or not? Sam's brow tightened as his eyes bared a salty glare. Um, Sammy, Ruth chimed in, hobbling in place. Sorry to cut this short, too, but I really need to use the ladies' room anyway. Her face tightened. You still remember where the bathroom is, right? On the second floor, darling? To the right on the end, just got it refurbished, too. She thanked him and hurried off. Oh, man, Alex interrupted again. The phone? The scowl returned to Sam. He clenched his fist and started to walk towards him till Felton stepped in between. Looky here, Sam. These two had a bit of a fender bender down the road. You know how that can be. Even in the heat, nothing can melt taut like that. If you give, I'm what... Um, what, if you give him what you, he needs, he'll be out of your hair before you know it. Sam exchanged a glance from Felton to the uptight man and then sighed. Phone's on the second, second two. In the diner. Come on then. I can whip up some of them grilled cheddars and anything else you want. Any of y'all gonna need a room? He led the group to a staircase in the back. He stated there was a small diner at the top housing several tables and booths. Off to the side was a miniature-sized room resembling the lobby with a few comforters and even more knickknacks covering the walls. Sam pointed to the wall next to the counter. There's your phone. Sheriff's number to is posted on the side. The suit stormed over to it. Sam hobbled behind the counter. So I got two grilled cheddars for you and Ruth. Anything else? He asked. Can I get a coffee? A soft woman's voice spoke up. Her presence started him. Sorry there, missy. Didn't see your trail in the pack. One cup of java coming up. Pot's fresh, too. Oh, and that'll be two fifty. Felton glanced back to see her render a sheepish grin. This was the first time he had really taken in her appearance. She was a short woman, rivaling Ruth in height with golden locks nestling around her ears. She had a face plastered with freckles and eyes greener than moss. She was certainly a looker and a thin one, donning a minty green and white sweater. He noted the large stain of coffee on it. So is it salvageable, he asked. The sweater, I mean. Coffee always seems to draw to shirts like a crap ton on a neck. 
like a crap on a neck. She glanced down at it and chuckled. Oh, this. Yeah, it's a crock. My favorite, too. But my mama knows a thing or two about stains. This will be nothing to her. Your mama, huh? That's why you're cutting through the past. Let's see. From the way you hold yourself, I figured you to be a Nebraskan girl. Am I right? She gave him an impressed look. Am I that obvious, or did you just look at my plates? He laughed. I might have peeked at that, he admitted. She smiled, shaking her head. Well, yeah, I'm a Nebraskan girl, born and raised, and yeah, I'm on my way to see my mama. It was Felton, right? Yes, ma'am. Felton Banks, he said, offering a hand. Carol, if I remember it. Yeah, Carol Swan. She replied, taking it. You seem to know the innkeeper pretty well. I take it you're from around these parts? Something like that. Me and Ruthie used to come through here every year to do some hunting. Ruthie, I take it she's your daughter. Yes, ma'am, she's 16 years a pain in my ass. Carol snickered. In all seriousness, though, I love her to death. She's the pride and light. Don't know what I'd do without her. That's nice. What about you? Any kids yourself? Me? None, to be honest. I'd say I'm still a kid at heart. Is that so? Sam set the mug of hot joe on the counter and Carol quickly slid the exact payment his way. He popped into the register, made his way back into the kitchen, felt and eyed her as she lifted the mug and took a small sip. Well, she smiled and took another one. I'd say it's pretty good. Indeed. You hear that, Sam? Felton called back to him. Found you another believer. Mighty obliged, he replied. Felton caught her staring over at Alex on the phone, who was obnoxiously yelling at the sheriff, occasionally tossing a glance back her way like a guard dog. So how you feeling, he asked. Oh my god. Phone glitched. So how you feeling, he asked. Still a bit shaken up, to say the least. Most of it's a blur now. You gonna be all right? She nodded softly, taking another sip. I'm starting to second guess what happened out there, thinking maybe I dozed off and then slammed the brakes when I realized it. Thank you again for stepping in. I know I already said that. I just really thought that guy was gonna clock me or something. Felton chuckled. Don't you worry about him. Assholes like to talk a big game, but he ain't gonna touch you. Yeah, dang Skippy, that's all they do, Sam chimed in, returning up to the counter. Lousy good for nothing. At least I wouldn't let I'm felt in scowled towards Alex. She chuckled. So is that your angle? The big strong guardian check up on everyone, fight back one asshole at the at a time, stranger or not. He sneered. We're all people at the end of the day, just trying to make our own way. Some just feel the need to bitch their heads off. Just because me, I just do what I can. Well, what you need to do, Sam started, is keep that kind of trouble away from me. His words were cut off by a small trimmer of the glass, and silverware started to rattle. Even the knickknacks on the wall began to shake. Felton turned to Carol to see her eyes widen in fear. It felt like the rumbling from an earthquake. What the? Alex shouted, pulling the phone away. The trimmer escalated into a more violent shake, like the entire building was encased within a snow globe. Suddenly, a louder thunder exploded in the air, forcing Carol to instinctively grab onto... Felt in as the lights started to flicker erratically. More lamps and other loose items continued to shake until they crashed to the ground. Following by tables sliding across the floor, the walls joined the choir of roaring, again, adding to a deep moan. Sam, what the hell's going on? Felton screamed. His voice barely carried over the thunder of noises. Not sure, he shouted back. His eyes drifted over to the window. Oh, sh 
Yet his words were interrupted by a heavy thud against the building, which threw everyone to the ground. Several windows shattered from the impact, launching glass in all directions. The walls moaned, even louder, accompanied by the splitting of wood and furniture slamming against them. Felt and held on tightly to Carol on the floor as the chaos around them continued to erupt. After several more seconds, the tremor slowly began to die. The rattle soon ceased and everything settled. I guess it was maybe like... They're in the mountains, so I'm guessing it would be like... Um... Avalanche. Felton slowly looked up glass and other knickknacks when the walls were sprawled out on the floor. A few tables overturned. He glanced down at Carol, who was buried in his chest. You all right? He asked her. She poked her head up, her face plastered with fear. Yeah, what, what just happened? She spoke softly. It was as if she was afraid her voice would kick start another episode. Everybody else okay? Felton called out. Sam poked out from behind the counter, eyes in a frenzy as he studied the damage around. Alex emerged, as well cursing to himself. Ruth, Felton called out. Ruthie, are you okay? There was a second of delay before her voice carried out from the halls in the back. Dad? She called out, emerging. She ran up to him and into his arms. Are you alright, darling? Are you hurt? She had tears in her eyes. No, I'm fine. What the hell happened? What was that? See, sweet Jesus, Sam said out loud. He tore from around the counter and over to one of the broken windows. Alex joined him, more curses under his breath. Curious felt and made his way over to not moving, removing his grip from Ruth with Carol in tow. He approached the window and his heart dropped as the sight for miles. Snow engulfed the trees like a white ocean, broken branches and uprooted trunks. Could be seen sticking out in the mix. It was an avalanche. The group stared silently in awe at the sight until a splash of snow from the roof drew Felton's attention to the window. So he noticed the snow had stopped just a few feet below the opening. His heart sank even lower at the revelation. If the snow had reached this high, that meant their cars were clearly buried to hell. We'll be back with part three.